Let's get to the chart master, Carter Worth, a quarter soon after to find out what, where that is. Hey, Carter. Hi. So, well, both a place to respect but to be cautious about at the same time. So let's, uh, and uh, obviously FANG, the acronym, has taken its place uh, with .com and Nifty 50 and BRIC. But first, the broader thrust of growth versus value. I've got here the Russell 1000 pure growth in blue, the Russell 1000 pure value down here, and then the index itself of which these two parts are derived. This is not the way to compare something, of course. The way to compare something is to hold the aggregate as a constant, the next chart. I'm going to hold the orange line as a constant, and then what we see is the true uh, spread or continued business as usual on the street, at least for the last year and a half, growth value. New highs, new lows. And one could think it's just a super cap phenomenon because it's got the Googles and Amazons. It's, it's down the uh, cap chain as well. Here, for instance, is the Russell mid cap pure growth, pure value versus the Russell mid cap. Is it same exercise? Let's freeze the orange line and hold it as a constant. So what we've got here, same circumstance. Values are essentially making new lows, growth making new highs. Now, at what point is it overdone? Uh, that's the key, and that will be the key for the market, uh, surely. Let's look at this now very popular NYSE FANG Plus Index. You can actually trade futures on it as of November 8th of last year. It's uh, sort of 10 super growth names that are, are, are uh, in the technology space, and you, you know the names. Collectively, they're about uh, $4.2 trillion, um, almost the same as the bottom 270 stocks in the S&P. So let's look at this index chart. Here it is, first returns. The annualized return since inception of this index is 29 percent since 2014. By contradistinction, we're already up 36 percent this year. We're annualizing at 93 percent. So the issue is, are we a little hot? We are a little hot. Um, in fact, I would draw the lines this way on the chart. Here it is, past two years. And here um, is the trend line in which the index, and literally, we stopped over and over and over at the high, at the low, and we are essentially right at the high again. My hunch is it's a time to reduce, take some profits. Does that mean that the other parts of the market come back that have been lagging like financial industrials? To be determined. But this is a little hot. Carter comes over. Of course, girl. Come on over, Carter. Yeah. Of course, Carter. Michelle will bring the chair in. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Thank you Michelle. Sorry. How are you? Oh thank God. you, Michelle. Get thank my, you, Michelle. Get my like, I mean, everybody's thinking Michelle, when Ryan was here, it was like, get, I, get out I of here, Ryan. I thanked Ryan as well. Yeah, Michelle, she's I the greatest. I thanked Michelle. Ryan as well. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, that last chart, though, it, it looked still, even if there was a drawdown, like it was still well within that channel. So would you expect that to hit the bottom of the channel and then well, bounce so back? Well, so a member bank could just blow through the top and never look back, right? But we, right. It's, it's getting a bit sensational. It's taking on a life of its own, and it's happening while small cap stocks are performing. So they're both, um, in many ways, a speculative kind of thing. People clustering in fewer and fewer names as global growth is in question, and then trying to play small cap, also idiosyncratic domestic names that they feel don't have risk for the global economy. It all sets up for, that looks to be the top of the channel. I'd rather reduce if I were a long only player. So Carter, I follow your work very closely. Well, thank um, you for You've that. been an unabashed fang bull for a very long time. How many times have you made this sort of call? Obviously the lines are the lines, but how many times have you made this call over the last year or so? Well, just it's a little bit like if it ain't broke, you know, just yeah. don't fix it. it it's, it, it's working. Now at some point that is sort of ridiculous. It just can't keep going forever. I think it is a time to reduce a bit because at this point, again, the money, just the sheer market cap, again, $4.2 trillion, more than the bottom 270 stocks in the S&P, who's the incremental buyer? Carter, that channel. Th if, thank you for that softball, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it blows through that channel, do you get more bullish or more bearish? That's right. So there are two ways through. That means that you, you, are you reaching the end stage? Because end stage can carry quite a bit further. It could be parabolic, and it could last months. Um, my inclination is to, if it has that were to happen, to sell more aggressively and to uh, pull in even more. So is your call for reducing this, is that also a call in the broader markets? Well, you, you could you you seem, can make that. You seem sort well, of wondering here, whether or not the, the other sections you remember, pick up. Remember, the broader market is stuck. We know the SP is up 3.7% year to date. 
the equal weight is up 2.7, and the median performance of the S&P is up like 1.2. We basically have gone nowhere. But if you look at semiconductors and if you look at software companies, so certain parts of tech are, are exploding sure, with Fang. In fact, they're outperforming. So Microsoft maybe this is indicative of just a change in the economy. In, in other words, where the economy is driven from, and that these stocks are the ultimate way to play growth. And maybe this is a new era. That's right. And it, it, it is all that. But as we know, all downtrends are characterized by countertrend rallies, and all uptrends have countertrend sell offs. We're probably at the point where a countertrend sell off could be expected. Carter, thank you. Thanks. Carter Braxenworth at Cornerstone mm. Macro. Would you reduce Fang Plus? I love your work, Carter. That's fantastic, Dan. I was <laughs> I thought that Facebook was stopped at 155 after the whole Cambridge Analytica thing. I didn't think it was going north of 160 for the rest of the year. And here we are covering close to 200. I still think the move to the upside has been a little bit too much too fast. And I would be taking profits in Facebook. My question would be, a sell-off in Fang, how much of a harbinger of really bad things does it mean for the broader market? Right. And I would suggest maybe a lot, quite right. frankly. And, and to you, the bull of the desk, <laughs> yes. oddly, which is for a the weird day, place which for is me bizarre. To be. It's like exactly. we're in a parallel universe right now. Um, but if, if Fang Plus pulls back and maybe the other sectors don't necessarily pick up, yeah, aren't I, you worried? I, I, yeah, am I worried? I mean, what, listen, we will know when this market's going to crack. You will have just this massive run-up and sell-off. It'll be a 1,000-point range on the Dow for the day, tons of volume. It'll be so obvious. We've had a 7, 10, 9-year bull run. It'll be so obvious. So if we get a 5% pullback or a 10% pullback, I'm less worried than I would be. I, I'll tell you where the other part I'll get worried. If we get that blow-off that I was asking Carter about, if all of a sudden we just rip higher, then I get very nervous. I, I, you know, I just feel like we've had a lot of rotation in this market over the last couple of years. There have been times where we've actually looked at the transports. They have outperformed. The banks have outperformed. Uh, emerging markets have outperformed. I mean, I, to me, until one of those things really falls out of the race, I think you're, you're, you're sideways. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.